Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is session 4, part 2 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing the operation of God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, introducing facts about the laws of compensation or the analogy of reaping what is sown, and how compensation drives forgiveness and repentance. This session was recorded on 19th of September 2017 from 10.50 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Compensation and reaping what we sow. Mm. So could you briefly explain to us just the very basics of this analogy? Well, at its core, it's basically um, if we sow something today, let's say if we were doing the analogy with regard to a harvest of wheat, let's mm -hmm. say, then if we sow seeds of wheat today, mm -hmm. then come the spring or summer or autumn, whenever the harvest time is for that particular type of uh, food, we would, we would reap the harvest of that wheat, where, where one seed has now grown into 30 or 50 or 100 seeds, and we can reap the harvest of that particular wheat. Here we see a couple of things in, in, in operation. We can see that if I sow wheat, I'm going to harvest wheat probably. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I hope so. Uh, well, if I'm, if I'm not going to harvest wheat, then I probably won't harvest anything at all, yeah. you know, if there was no rain or something. But, but if I harvest wheat, I'm definitely not going to be able to expect to, to if I sow wheat, I'm not going to be able to expect to harvest barley <laughs> or mangoes or something else, you know, of a completely different nature. If I sow a certain thing, then then what I reap must be that thing in kind multiplied by its effects, mm -hmm. uh, and usually by hundreds of times. Now, so that's you could say like in kind, yeah. uh, so sort of reaping in kind, and and then there's also obviously to do with quantity as well, isn't there? Obviously, mm -hmm. if you sow a tiny little bit, then obviously yeah. you're not going to reap. You you reap you hope you'll reap hundreds or fifty times more because each seed head might have fifty times more seed on it than the original seed. But you're not going to reap a lot because you just sowed sparingly. So yes. if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. Yeah. And obviously, if I sit there and I think about sowing, but I don't do it. Yes. <laughs> in other words, I sow nothing at all. Then uh, it's pretty obvious that I'm not going to reap anything either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or if it is, it's because somebody else did the sowing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if we then apply that principle mm -hmm. to compensation. So that's an analogy. That's an analogy. Using a physical mm. natural process on the earth. And that analogy has been around for tens of thousands of years. And it appears in lots of different faiths and mm. in lots of different sort of permeations. But, mm. you know, it, it's kind of, I guess because it's so fundamental, it's so easy to observe, really. It is. <laughs> it's yeah. through a lot of belief systems on the planet. Yes. Um, but so if we apply this analogy of sowing to reaping mm -hmm. and sowing sparingly and reaping sparingly versus abundantly and abundantly, mm -hmm. if we apply all that to now what's happening with us personally, mm -hmm. we're basically saying, aren't we, that if I do something now or think something now or feel something now, that in the future I'm going to have a corresponding harvest, if you like, or I've sown something now, and I'm going to have something happen in the future mm. or that will reflect the quality and quantity of what I did right now. Mm, that's right. Yeah. So, so if we look at what we can sow, we can obviously have thoughts, we have words, we have deeds, actions, desires, intentions. We, this is all, let's call it the sum total of our behaviour. Mm -hmm. um, if we sow a certain type of behaviour with a certain amount of enthusiasm, a certain quantity, uh, we will obviously reap certain results mm -hmm. based on whether that behaviour is positive in harmony with love. We will then have rewards that are commensurate or, or yep. in relation to yep. what we sowed. And then we would also have, if we sowed all these different things, we're out of harmony with God's laws, out mm -hmm. of harmony with the laws of love, in other words, in disobedience to the law, Mm -hmm. then obviously there's going to be a lot of negative consequences or corrective consequences that 
we reap and it will probably be more intense than one we thought when we sow. <laughs> <laughs> Just in the same, like when you sow a seed, there's usually 100 seeds or 50 seeds that come about as a result of it. So, and this helps us see that just one little action mm -hmm. can have quite a large result if we're not careful. Yeah, mm. yeah. So we'll talk later on about those three components of the analogy, if you mm. like. So, uh, so sowing in kind. Reaping in kind. Reaping in kind. So reaping similar things to what we sow or yeah. the same sort of things. Yeah. Um, that our sowing and reap our, that our reaping is commensurate to our sowing. Yes. So it's it's related in in size and strength to yeah. what the two are. So in other words, if I do it sparingly, I'll reap. If sow sparingly, I'll reap sparingly. Yes. Yeah. And the third one is about whether we act at all, whether we sow at all. Yeah. <laughs> so. So this is a big problem on the planet at mm -hmm. the moment, actually, because a lot of people talk a lot of talk. Yeah but they do very little. Yeah. And I notice this all the time, you know, people talk about, oh, I've got this new invention idea, but they don't want to take the actions and do all the hard work necessary mm -hmm. to make it come true, to yeah. make it come about, you know. A lot of people talk a lot of talk on the planet. Mm -hmm. Very few people actually act. Mm. And, uh, and that is a huge problem if they want to have the benefits of what they sow. Yeah, mm. yeah. All right, so that's mm. that's it in a nutshell, mm -hmm. because we're going to refer to that analogy often mm -hmm. throughout our discussion. Yes, and I think there's also the implication, isn't there, in this discussion that there's a time delay. Well, there is, but we've we've just mentioned that there isn't really. You know, well, there's a time delay in the sense of some things. Part yeah. part there could be a time delay. So mm -hmm. there are some things that are in instant, obviously mm -hmm. upon the soul, but some of the effects of the things that we do, for example may take years, 10 years, hundred, even thousands yeah. of years there may be an effect or, for mm -hmm. in the future. A harvest, if you like. Yeah, yeah. a harvest that lasts thousands of years for, mm -hmm. for multiple generations of humanity because of something I chose to do. Yeah. So obviously those kind of harvests mm -hmm. have quite a large effect on our soul condition Yes. if we've done something that has a huge effect for a long time on humanity. Well, multi-generational sin, it's, <clears throat> that is in essence, you know, if I hold on to what I have, take no responsibility for it and then have children, mm -hmm. I pass on what I have and that you see that. Mm, but that's minor in comparison <laughs> to some of the other things that we do yes. in the sense of like if we create a religious faith that in that encourages war, for example, mm -hmm. under certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. Imagine the consequences of that mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. So you can see that the consequences of certain types of behaviour are going to be quite extreme um, based upon how many people it's affected and how much pain and suffering it's caused for others. There's going to be quite large consequences. The same applies positively, actually, because remember the law of compensation, reaping what we sow, is all about also our positive things that we sow. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, all the good things that we reap that have a large effect on humanity, even though they might not have an effect on a large number of people right now, mm -hmm. but 10 years or 100 years or 1,000 years' time may affect all humanity, then obviously we'll bear the ben benefit of okay. that inside yeah. of our soul. Yeah, mm. yeah it's wonderful. Mm. It's wonderful. So this is what's happening. We've talked now about what is the truth of compensation, mm -hmm. how it works, uh, why God created it, the loving creations, and then we've introduced this analogy. Mm -hmm. I'd like to move on now. Mm -hmm. I'd like to talk about factors affecting my personal awareness of compensation. Mm -hmm. So we've established already that it's happening whether we want to know about it or not. Mm -hmm. Why is it or the, that many people remain unaware of what's happening with relation to compensation in its full depth uh, because you've spoken about how it acts upon our emotions and our soul mm -hmm. at the, in the most serious degree, that's where it acts. And yet most people on earth don't even want to be aware of that or they d remain unaware of it until they pass. So I'd like to raise a few issues that affect, I suppose, rather than you answering the question I just posed, yeah, see, I, I would probably argue that they're not unaware at, at some level. They're not unaware. And by that, I mean, like, as I've already mentioned in some previous answers on the subject, 
physically, we are aware that there's a relationship between our behaviour and what we reap as a result of our behaviour. So, for example, if I eat too much, I get fat. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're aware of that relationship. If I don't exercise, I'll be unhealthy. I'm aware of that relationship. Mm -hmm. If I eat certain toxic foods that I'm, you know, or, or even if I drink some toxic poison, I'll probably die. I'm aware of these. Really, these are all uh, compensatory effects or law or cause and effect in operation. Um, but we just don't apply them to the spiritual and the emotional part of ourselves, which is where we are, have a large degree of unawareness, a yeah. lack of awareness. Yeah. 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 So yeah. a lot of the questions that we now probably will discuss about awareness mm -hmm. really relate a lot to our spiritual lack of awareness yes. and our emotional lack of awareness. Yes, yes, mm. yes, definitely. That's yeah. what I was getting there in a muddled kind of a way. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, but it's important yeah. that the people who are listening understand that, you know, it's quite obvious in their day to day life, if they look at it, that there are certain areas where we can see compensatory effects uh, physically in particular. But it's the emotional, spiritual uh, denial mm -hmm. of compensatory laws that are going to cause us the most pain and suffering in the long term. Yeah, mm. yeah. All right. So, so now what if I introduce some factors that do affect our mm -hmm. awareness mm -hmm. and I'll ask you a series of questions about each of those factors. Sure, sure. Firstly, personal, we probably need to say some preliminary stuff. So <laughs> the first point is personal awareness does not affect the operation of compensation, does it? No, that's right. It does not affect the operation of compensation. Personal, and here we're talking about personal awareness. And what I mean by that is that if I don't know, if, and we can give examples, mm -hmm. and perhaps that's the best way to illustrate it. I might not know such a thing called the law of gravity. I might not even know that if I go up onto a high building and jump off that I'm not going to fly just like a bird. Yeah. But when I jump off, and attempt to fly <laughs> and find because I've got no aerodynamic Means. structure <laughs> yep. that I fall straight to the ground and kill myself. Yep. I have now worked out that that whether I was aware of it or not, it still worked. Mm. It still operated. Mm -hmm. It's not like it doesn't it doesn't calculate. It doesn't go, oh does this person know about this? No. Oh well then we'll <laughs> we'll skip it for them. You know, it doesn't do that. <laughs> it operates consistently every time. So this is what yeah. we mean by does awareness, we, this is the kind of awareness yeah. we're talking about. So, so with regard to any law, whether we're aware the law is there or not, mm -hmm. it has its effects. Yes. It, it's going to have, a, a, you know, if we break the law, it's going to have a consequence. If we live in harmony with the law, it will have consequence too, yeah. which is positive, you know, which will be rewarding. So, so we need to understand that just because we know about a law or don't know, it doesn't mean it's going to change the operation of the law. Mm -hmm. so, so obviously, from that statement, you could see that it makes a lot of sense to try to know <laughs> <laughs> and discover rather than just ignore or, or remain ignorant of yeah. law. Yeah. But that's different to uh, personal condition, because personal condition does affect the way the law operates. Yes. And what I mean by personal condition is like the choices we make, the decisions we make, the desires we have, the thoughts we have, these all do change the operation of the law and how the law is, it imposes its consequences upon us. As you've mentioned previously, that's all energetically measured. It's measured in terms of its its the quality of the energy inherent in those things, isn't exactly. it? And so uh, this is where when I genuinely didn't know something, genuinely, yes. and I had a, and I had, a, I, I wanted to know if possible, but at that moment, I just didn't know. So an example of that in a previous thing that we just said yep. is let's say I genuinely didn't know that if I jumped off a building, I would die. Yeah. I didn't mean to suicide. Yeah. I just thought, oh, the bird's flying. I'm going to try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's say I was that, I was that naive innocent. and yeah. innocent that I decided to do this. Yeah. Right. 
And fortunately for most of humanity, they decide these kind of things when they're quite small <laughs> and therefore <laughs> can't climb very high. Because <laughs> I remember making that decision myself when I was quite small. <laughs> but uh, you know, the, the pain of the hitting the ground, while it might break a few bones or whatever, it uh, doesn't kill you. And so then you learn, wow, a lot of pain going from that. I don't know if I'm going to try that again, right? Yeah. But, but if, you, if you genuinely didn't know and you, and you, uh, and you jump from a very high building, God will not consider that to be suicide. Mm. In other words, it's not recorded as you intentionally trying to end your life. Yeah. Right? But if you did know, yeah. now it is. Yeah. So you can see there that that's not about awareness of the law. No. That's about your underlying intention, your underlying yes. condition. Yeah. Determining the outcome or the effects. Yeah. So, so... If you jumped off a building and you really didn't know the effect, what it was going to have, mm -hmm. aside from the fact that it ended your life on earth and now you're in the spirit world, and God's not going to, there's not going to be any compensatory or negative effects upon that action because because you generally didn't know that that was going to be the result. So could you say in that case, just the physical operation of the natural laws of cause and effect that operate on any organism or matter of your mass falling from that height, that's the... That's, That's the end of life for your physical body. Your physical body can only cope with so much stress. So you wouldn't even call that compensation. You just call that the operation of cause and effect. Yes, it's the operation. Yeah. Of, it's the law, law of gravity in action. Yeah. Um, obviously, there is an effect, and that is all your loved ones, obviously, now know you're no longer with them <laughs> on Earth. And, and it's possibly quite painful. <laughs> uh, well, no, it's well, Physically. oftentimes not, you know, you... like particularly death is generally not a, a physically painful problem. It's mm -hmm. the suffering that occurs before death. Yes. <laughs> because it'd be where... pretty quick in that scenario. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, you know, those kind of scenarios, it's just like a swoon or whatever, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like you fainting or whatever. It's, that's how it feels. It's like yeah. going to sleep, yeah. um, which is why in the first century I called it sleeping, you yeah. know, because it is like going to sleep. But yeah. But obviously the suffering that occurs before you die, that's where <laughs> that can yeah. be quite painful depending yeah. on how, how, how hard that is, you know, that, that, it, that can be where a lot of your suffering occurs. But notwithstanding all of that, we see that, that if I genuinely didn't know, then I can't be expected to pay a penalty for something I genuinely didn't know. Mm. But this is where it gets down to the grade, the graduations, I suppose you could call it. Yeah. Um, how much did I genuinely not know, mm -hmm. and how much did I really know? Yeah, and that and that the law measures that mm -hmm. perfectly. In fact, mm -hmm. in every case, and and so this is where our personal condition, our personal decision making process, is very much a factor mm. in in the law and how it works. So while personal awareness does not affect the operation of the law, mm -hmm. personal condition certainly does. Mm. <laughs> And so you've given a very physical example. If we were to give a more spiritual and emotional example, mm. um, oh, I put myself on the spot, <laughs> but uh, because I feel like um, let's let's say sexual immorality when you're married to a partner, like so, so you're married to somebody and you decide you're going to cheat on them, you know, and um, it's pretty obvious that if somebody cheated on you, you might be hurt emotionally. Yeah and that you might feel the pain of it emotionally. Now, if it's pretty obvious to you that you would feel the pain of it emotionally if somebody did it to you, mm -hmm. then doing it to somebody else... You can't really plead lack of awareness, No, can you? you can't. Oh, I you... didn't know it was going to have that effect on you. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. Because it, it, if you just applied the law of ethics to the problem, you would see that, oh, well, and I'd feel pretty bad if you cheated on me, so why would I cheat on you, you know? Yeah. So th these are areas where we sometimes claim we don't know, mm -hmm. but the reality is we do. Mm. And God's me laws measure it as if we do. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, and a lot of us uh, want to blame, look, I'm like that because of a parent or I'm, I, that's just how, I, you know, now it's drummed into me. I've got no control over this behavior. When really we're grown ups now, like we yeah, really God, are. God's all about self responsibility. Yeah, so whenever yeah. you claim, oh, you know, my parent did this and that's why now as an adult I do that, yeah. well, God's not going to take that. He'll take certain factors into account, obviously, but he's, but he's not going to ever allow you to use that as an excuse for your unloving yes. behaviour. Yeah. Another thing is, too, that you see often on earth is you see that 
you know, we so we do a lot of so-called loving behaviour really because of selfishness. Like, mm -hmm. for, exa for example, not telling somebody the truth because we're afraid of their response. Mm. Right. So, so we're not motivated by a loving desire there yeah. at all to withhold information. We're not motivated by loving. We're motivated by an unloving desire. Yeah. So, so this is the thing that is going to be assessed. <laughs> <laughs> Our lack of action when we should have acted, the law of compensation also assesses, yeah. which is something we haven't probably mentioned up until now, but, but it's a factor in, in the law of compensation. If, if we should have acted and we did not, mm -hmm. then if that love, is also measured. Sorry. Yeah, if love would demand that we act and we chose not to yeah. out of personal selfishness. Or fear. Fear. Or whatever. Which is selfishness yeah. essentially in action. Yeah, it's yeah. an avoidance of personal yeah. emotion, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, then then the law is going to operate as if, us. as if we took an we, unloving action. We took an unloving yeah. action, which was to purposefully remain distant to the problem. Yeah. You know, God's laws don't allow us to do that, actually, at the spiritual and emotional level. Yeah. So at the physical level, we can step away from things if that's what we want. But emotionally and spiritually, God's laws always have a compensatory effect upon those kind of decisions yeah. if they had a negative effect on somebody else. Mm -hmm. So, so for example, if I know that you have cheated on somebody else, right, your partner, mm -hmm. and I don't say anything, my not saying something causes certain things to happen in your relationship, and I am going to be have to pay the compensatory price for a lot of that. Yeah. Because I chose to not to not take the make the decision to act lovingly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's there's plenty of examples we can give there, but perhaps we need to leave the examples for yeah. later. But you know, there's examples of being motivated by sincere desire compared to motivated by selfish desire, for example. Yes. Yeah. You know, you can see there as well. Frequently we do things that are so called loving you know, oh, I tell you that you got a nice, that you look nice today when really inside I think, oh, she's looking terrible today, you know. Yeah. But I'll cheer her up anyway because I want something from her yes. or whatever. Yeah. Many times humans are motivated by addiction yeah. to get to do things. And all addictions from God's perspective are unloving and they all have negative consequences emotionally and spiritually. Whether they have any physical ones, but they also usually do have physical yeah. ones as well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> but they definitely have emotional and spiritual consequences. Yeah. yeah. So just to summarise then, mm -hmm. uh, because we're talking about whether or not personal awareness of compensation affects the operation of compensation. Mm. Our first point is that the law operates whether we're aware or not. So if I do something unloving, there is a compensatory effect, even if I innocently sincerely didn't know there will be pain and suffering because that's how god's gonna teach me what's loving and what's not hey yes yeah but the pain and suffering is not necessarily going to be fully emotional or spiritual under those circumstances if yeah. the lack of awareness was, was sincere. sincere and this is where the second factor comes in that my own condition affects how the law of compensation operates. Yeah, my choices, my decisions, my feelings, my motivations. My knowledge, my desire for knowledge, yeah. all of those things yeah. are, are taken into account in the way that compensation operates yes. upon me. Yes. Okay, yes. that's clear. Thank you. Let's talk about the facts affecting my personal perception of compensation. What are the factors that affect my perception of the operation of compensation. Mm. So here, we, here we're not talking about awareness, we're talking about perception. Yes. Now, perception is different than awareness. Awareness is when we're aware of God's truth about a matter. Uh -huh. Perception is just my personal perception about the matter. So, right? so is it true, it's like how I experience the matter? How, how I experience I the matter, how I feel about the matter, how I look at the matter, how I examine the matter, what decisions I make about the matter. <laughs> how connected I am emotionally to the truth about the matter. Well, there's a yeah. number of factors which yeah. we'll go through, but but I'm um, looking here perceptually, uh, we're looking at the perception, you know, what, what's going on inside of us with our perception. And so we frequently have things, factors that affect our perception of compensation, whether it's actually happening or not, where, you know, even be out of measure whether compensation is even working or not is all about our perception a lot of the times 
it's still working behind the scenes, but it's just how aware are you, uh, how, how much you perceive it working that, that is what we need to discuss. Because mm, I suppose in formulating this section, uh, I was thinking a lot about how many people seemingly go along in their lives. Compensation is happening to is being accrued constantly mm. by the by the regular individual. Positive and, and yes. negative, like corrective and reward, you know. And yet, many times, most people are sort of unaware of one or the other of either the positive or the negative or all of <laughs> or it. Both, yeah, yeah. Consciously in their day to day lives, they're not feeling the pain, they're not feeling the pleasure, they're not thinking about the pain, they're not thinking about the pleasure. That's right. How does that even happen? Is, yeah. is the question. Is there a question yeah. really, isn't yeah. it? How do, how do you get to be so lacking in perception? Yes. Yeah. So so we listed a number <clears throat> of factors, didn't we? Yeah, and again this, this. isn't exhaustive. It's, yeah. it's obviously not an exhaustive list, but Let's start with the first one of emotional sensitivity. Yeah. And obviously we're talking here about, obviously measuring something physically is relatively easy to do because you see the physical effects. It's like if I eat too much, if I look in the mirror, I see the physical effects of that, you mm. know, uh, or, you know, I decide to take actions like drive my car too fast and I prank my car and, and that's the physical effect of my action. And I can see the physical effect of my action, so I know that speed does kill, you know, yeah, as the yeah. saying goes. So I yeah. know that the slower I go, the more chance I have as my physical body has for survival, for yes. example. Now, usually we are aware of those kind of things, but we're not aware of the spiritual and emotional side of our life very much at all. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that when we take an action that is a, that involves our thoughts, feelings, desires, intentions out of harmony with God's laws and they harm ourselves or somebody else, we are frequently not emotionally sensitive to the immediate result mm. of that, the immediate compensatory result Be of that action. Because there is an immediate soul-based result, isn't there? Every time. If I do something loving or unloving, there's an immediate soul-based either pleasure or pain yep. that if I was sensitive, I would perceive immediately. Yes, yes. Mm. You would perceive it immediately if you were sensitive. Of course, what happens in, for most people is it builds up over time. Yeah. So what happens is that they are desensitized to the immediate emotional result. Mm -hmm. And then further actions happen. Time now, remember we said that many much reaping occurs over time. Yeah. So now we've got, we've sowed something. We, we immediately repped a soul-based consequence, which we are not sensitive to. Mm -hmm. So now we either continue the action or we don't even correct the action or any of those things that remains within us, creating bigger, more powerful effects. And these must be coming externally to me because I'm numbing out emotionally. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, it, and as they build and they build and build, we become increasingly you know, we begin to become aware mm -hmm. of, wow, why is this thing happening in my life now? Mm -hmm. what, what's going on now? So, so an example of a person who's cheating on their partner, for example, they may not feel the immediate soul-based consequence of cheating on their partner. Mm -hmm. But over time, there's different things that will occur in their life because God's laws are trying to expose the error. Mm -hmm. There's different things that will eventually occur in a life where eventually, even if it happens after they've passed, their partner will become aware that yeah. they've cheated on them. They will. Mm -hmm. And then there will be a huge, usually outflow of emotion and so forth, where, yeah. where you, the person who cheated is now a bit more aware yes. yep. <laughs> that their actions harmed another. Yeah. So, so this is the beautiful part of the law, is that, is that if we can't see the initial thing, then the, then the bigger things occur. But what we're talking about here is the emotional sensitivity. Obviously, if we were emotionally sensitive right at the beginning, then we wouldn't allow things to take years yeah. or centuries to yeah. correct. <laughs> we would feel the emotional consequence right at that moment and yeah. then make some decisions to make the correction. So emotionally, from emotionally detuned, numbed, insensitive mm -hmm. to my own self and my own emotions, mm -hmm that's going to affect how I perceive the compensation that is occurring. Yes. Okay. Yes. Second one it was 
our conscience, the operation of our emotional conscience, we could call it. Yes. Now, we're going to have a very, very long discussion <laughs> about conscience as a part of this series of discussions. We have to have because conscience is a fantastic mechanism God has designed and placed within the human soul that allows the soul to become aware of what God says about any particular decision or choice that we're making. So we need we need to understand that it's also an emotional process. Mm -hmm. So so the conscience is of you could say at this stage, and we'll talk more about its real operation later. You say at this stage is that voice within that's saying you're doing the wrong thing, you're doing the wrong thing, or no, this is a good thing, this is a good thing. It does both. It says both things to you, and telling you that something's going going to be good or the, or it's going to be bad. You know, yeah, yeah, and and bef and often ha acting in this matter before you take the action you, you often it's happening beforehand so now if you're sensitive to it again uh, and aware of it and sensitive to it you'll likely follow it mm -hmm. uh, if you value it mm -hmm. you will likely follow it if you're not sensitive or, or want to be aware or you refuse to follow it because you want to sin you know want to, you want to do something wrong because of the consequence or the outcome what the short-term effects that you feel you're going to get from it mm -hmm. then of course you'll ignore it yeah and and that's going to be a problem and that's going to affect your perception yes you, you, you know you're going to think some things are going to be okay when yeah. they're not yeah and you're going to think some things are not okay when they actually are yeah you know and you can give an example of one or the other easily like mm -hmm. you you might think that you know looking like the in the first century is a common problem it's a big problem now a man looking at a woman sexually is a problem mm -hmm. right from god's perspective right but most men on the planet don't think it is yeah right conversely we can also do things like where where we have you know ideas or concepts where we're actually um on in the in the positive sense where we where we're acting and and not seeing the result the good results of those actions for example when we're loving ourselves, mm. um it's good to love yourself mm. you know it's good to tell the truth mm. as these things are good things and even though the people around you think they're bad yeah. uh, they're good yeah so so you know this is where our conscience is often has been inhibited from working by our surroundings and also by the decisions and choices we've made in our life yeah so so we need to see though that emotional conscience the operation of conscience has a huge effect on our perception mm. when it comes and to i don't know if you actually defined conscience but it's really a way that we can connect to god's truth about matters isn't it we'll, we'll define it's it an very, inbuilt mechanism yep. inside of the soul which we'll talk about more later that that god has designed specifically for people who can't connect to god's love that where god can share god's truth about any single matter without and 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 independent of your condition yeah. your soul condition yeah so, so you can be in the hills and get it or in the heavens and get it. <laughs> it it doesn't matter it's a communication link that god has established between god's soul and your soul of truth yeah and it's very very important to understand it so that's why we need to have a discussion about yeah. it yeah yeah but certainly if we're detuned from our conscience or our our almost our relationship with our conscience has been damaged by um, other emotional injuries, mm -hmm. um, then we are going to not perceive as clearly the operations of compensation. Yeah. 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 Okay, third factor that we listed. Yes, so, it's logical analysis, you know. Obviously, um, cause and effect, you, you see the relationship between the laws of compensation. The laws of compensation do involve the laws of cause and effect, where there is a cause or a trigger of an event, uh, and in a long-term or short-term you know, outcome from that particular yeah. event and compensation measures these particular things and then imposes the responsibility for the pain and suffering they cause back onto the human soul mm -hmm. so obviously cause and effect are relationships that we can logically and analyze and we can say well if i do this it's going to have this outcome if i do that it's going to have this outcome so for example things like if i eat 10 cows then somebody's going to have to produce <laughs> 10 cows yeah to eat, you know what I mean? And 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 ten cows are going to take this amount of grass and this amount of resources and this amount right. obvious it's obvious. It's logical. It's logical. And yeah. I need to use a logical analysis to examine the outcomes of my decision or potential decisions that I might make. 
Or, or, gee, I've had four divorces. What was the thing I was doing constantly in those marriages? That you know, there's a there's a constant effect. What might be the cause? Yes, I'm yeah, really know, unhappy. What might be creating that? I've been involved in 25 car accidents. What's yeah, going yeah. on? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? There, there's, there's I'm a, very lucky <laughs> to be still. Alive. Well, you probably are, but there's yeah. probably other things going yeah. on too. But, but you know, uh, a wise person examines the relationship between cause and effect. Yes, and, and uses logical analysis. And uses logical analysis to try to trace the origin of such things yeah so you know if i if i take so like for example i've used the example this example many times already in this discussion the example of eating overeating you know obviously um does god think overeating is good for you no because he, he's got the effect of it being that you get fat <laughs> and and therefore that demonstrates or should demonstrate to us that um overeating is definitely not good for us and it's not something that we should be doing and we need to find the reason why we want to do it and many of the reasons will be different for different people obviously mm -hmm. but it, logically it would make sense that i analyze that and try to trace the reason mm. Mm. all right so the next one follows on from that really and that's uh it, self-awareness and self-reflection yeah, so like I've separated this from logical analysis because I feel logic in itself can be applied to a degree, but but uh, frequently where we want to remain ignorant uh, of something, mm -hmm. and and no amount of logic is going to help us there. If 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 we want to remain ignorant of something, yeah. we will choose logic that helps us remain ignorant. Yeah, That's so flawed reality. logic really. They're, it's it's they're, going to be flawed. They're related, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. So we need to have a sincere desire for true self awareness, a sincere desire for true self reflection, mm -hmm. and we need to be able to analyze and go, okay, am I, am I you know, I look at the logic of it, but in, uh, is my logic even logical? Yeah. Or is it just an excuse that I'm using mm -hmm. to to justify a series of behaviour that I want to continue? Yeah. That that is harming me. Yeah. Or harming others. Yeah. Or harming the environment. Or harming mm -hmm. my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And and obviously, if I develop self awareness and self reflection, mm -hmm. I will be more logical about things like emotional sensitivity, the use of my conscience, <laughs> yeah. and also how I use or perceive logic to be. And so you can see emotional awareness and emotional sensitivity and, and this desire for self-reflection is a very important factor. Yeah, something I often think about is that, um, am I self-reflecting? Am I happier than I was a year ago? Am I, am I more unhappy, you know? If I'm, if I'm more unhappy, if someone was willing to say, look, I'm more unhappy and reflect, well, maybe it's something that I'm doing, then you, you start to get a link between your personal state and the compensatory effects that are going on around you. Mm. And that whole self-reflective, self-honesty about where you're actually at, um, when we avoid that, we, we basically don't, we're avoiding feeling the compensatory effects happening. Yes, and, and we frequently want to blame others, obviously, you yeah. know, for, for what happens in our life, but it's not very logical to do so, bearing in mind that, you know, we're the person at the centre of the pain in, that has been created, obviously, that we're yeah. feeling. Yeah. So, so it's not very logical to blame others for what's happening in our life, only blame others, you know. Yeah. It's very rare for a person on earth to be able to blame others and from God's assessment be actually accurate because there's often a lot of decisions and choices that we've made and many times out of harmony with love of self, for example, mm -hmm. that would cause us to put ourselves in positions that finish up with more pain and suffering for ourselves. Yeah. So, you know, this is where self-reflection and self-awareness are, are very, very important. Yeah. So our final factor affecting our perception of the operation of compensation is interesting. It's location. Mm, mm. What it's, can you tell us about that? Well, where where we live has an effect on what we see. So, if we examine where we live, we've got we've got firstly location here on Earth, where so we could be here, and then we've got the times when we're asleep. So, one third of our life we're in our sleep state. So that's another location, if you like, but now in the spirit world. And then after we've passed, we've got the spirit world itself as a location 
and we've now, let's say, left the Earth, although that's not always the case. Um, but there, there's location. Then we've got the celestial heavens. But of course, with regard to the celestial heavens, we're, there's no need to conversation anymore, and there's no sin anymore. So, you know, you're already aware of all the sins that possibly could be committed, and you don't need to worry about that. So, so if we look at the Earth versus the sleep state versus the spirit life, mm -hmm. You can see that depending on certain circumstances and depending on condition, there are certain things that you might be aware of in your sleep state that you weren't aware that you're not aware of when you're awake state during the day. Yeah. So, I'll give you an example of that. For, uh, there are many examples I can think of, but for for example, you could be living with a person who's cheated on you. In your sleep state, you might know. Mm -hmm. In your awake state, you might not. Mm -hmm. In your awake state, you might still be trying to treat them lovingly. Yeah. But in your sleep state, you might be really angry with them and treating them very angrily. Mm -hmm. All that happening at the same time. So, so you know, during the day, you're feeling one way and then you go to sleep. And during that period of time, you're feeling another way. And that's all about perception of based on where you are, your location. Yeah. The sleep state also gives you the advantage of being able to see the whole earth, not just your little portion of it. Yep. So you can go to other places on earth. You could also develop other relationships that you know nothing about in your awake state. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and often anger and other kinds of emotions like that do cause you to generate these other relationships, you know. So even though you might not have cheated on the husband who cheated on you in your awake state, mm -hmm. in your sleep state you might have, mm. and things like that. So the, so your perception of compensation will vary a lot depending on your location. And, and when you're a spirit, obviously you, there's even more that you see because mm -hmm. now you're in the spirit state, you're getting used to the spirit state, and as a result of that you, there's a whole heap of new things that you can see that you couldn't see before. So we talk more about what happens when we enter this spirit state, the full impacts of how we perceive compensation in that way. Yeah. Um, but when we're in the sleep state, are you saying that we can be more aware of the compensation that's happening even in our awake state when we're in our sleep state? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The awareness uh, depends a lot, doesn't it, still on desire, you know, yeah. obviously what you want to be aware of. Yeah. And obviously, um, it depends also a lot on your education that you receive in your, in your sleep state. And, and education in your sleep state is very dependent upon your desire for education. So obviously, yeah. that, there's a lot of factors that, that, that I influence it. Mm -hmm. But frequently, uh, people are very different in their sleep state than they are in their awake state. Mm. And, uh, and, and very frequently, those sleep state awarenesses don't translate to the awake state. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so you know, the reality is you can be racking up sin on earth, <laughs> and and then racking up less sin in this sleep state. Or you conversely, you can hardly be racking up any sin on earth, but because of all the frustrations and other things that you have on earth that you're in denial of yeah. in your sleep state, you might be acting upon them yeah. and racking up a lot more sin in your sleep state. So you know, there's a whole heap of things that might be going on that that is the sum total of the sin you've committed, so, mm. and your perception of it obviously is going to differ, differ quite wildly between mm. those states. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because it is the one soul, no matter where our location is, isn't it? Of so course, the yeah. compensation we are accruing yes. is all attributed. Isn't yes. It? Yeah. Obviously, even though you are you are not aware of certain things in your awake state that you are in your sleep state. The converse is often not true. So, so, in other words, when you're in your sleep state, you're aware of your whole wake state experience plus your sleep state experience. Yeah. Whereas when you're in your awake state on Earth, mm -hmm. you're only generally aware of your awake state experience. Yeah. Right. When you've passed into the spirit world, you're aware of both experiences as mm -hmm. well. So. So obviously, uh, an increased awareness of what both experiences are will mean different uh, reactions in different times so, and, and not always good reactions. Uh, uh, you know, you might think by knowing more that you might react better, but actually many people knowing more, when I say knowing more about their life, understanding the motivations of others that caused others to make the decisions they made, often they get more angry and upset when they in their sleep state. So, so just because you know more, it doesn't mean that you sin less yeah. <laughs> either because, because the knowledge may trigger 
other emotions that you're unwilling to feel and deal with mm -hmm. and are willing to sin more or, or get angry about or get, have developed hatred or other kinds of emotions that cause you to act upon them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it can be quite different between the two states and it's only once we've passed generally that we get to understand like the difference between those two states and how that's that's affected our life how it's affected everything mm -hmm. so we'll talk more about a number of these factors that we've just listed mm -hmm. uh in so we'll talk about them in more detail in in some of our following sections yeah. in this session so yeah. but that's a great summary thank you yeah. <laughs>